，交出指挥官背心。传世中正式向担任九百一十一天的指挥官身份说再见，由新任卫副部次长王必胜接任指挥官。哎，王必胜指挥官，穿上这件衣服哈，就要明白这是任重道远。那也会开始来，就是也品尝我这两年多的一个滋味。那把这件衣服交给你，我觉得很放心。陈时中以一致谢防疫团队，强调天天开会已经成为一体。面对记者挥手道别，陈时中也忍不住拿出手帕，轻轻擦拭眼角。做出来的决定，我们不敢说一百分，好，但是都朝向一百分在努力。两年多不眠不休的努力，在这里我还是要谢谢，哦，各位，替国家的贡献，我们一起走过来，我们替国家有贡献，我们对社会有尽责。接棒的王必胜表示，陈时中是优秀的指挥官，未来会持续向他请益。而指挥中心的首要工作就是持续监控国际疫情，作为国内防疫参考，稳健的去开放，让我们的民众能够恢复到。这个完全正常的生活，这是我们的大方向，我们的目标。陈时中接过王必胜鲜花后，在新任卫副部长薛瑞元的陪同下离开。机关署门口则挤满欢送他的同仁，让陈时中感性表示，要离开还是依依不舍。新唐人亚太电视，胡宗汉、郑永如，台湾台北报道。A swimming pool explosion has just happened in Sichuan Province, causing one death and seven injuries. Concerns are surrounding its serious safety hazard, and there have been previous warnings one week before. Explosion occurred, killing one and injuring seven. According to Tianmu News, an amusement center in Suining City, Sichuan Province, has a large inflatable swimming pool. However, last Saturday evening, the pool suddenly exploded and deflated for unknown reasons. The pool later collapsed and washed into the adjacent river. Later, the official of Pengxi County, Suining City, issued a confirmation that at about 7:30 p.m. that day, an accident occurred at the Pengnan Recreation Center in Pengxi County, causing one death and seven injuries. According to Orange Persimmon Interaction, the owner of a local restaurant said that the entertainment center that collapsed under the explosion was located in Pengnan New District. Just about 50 meters away from the river, and his shop is about 200 meters away. This playground has only been open for 10 days. There are inflatable swimming pools for adults and children in the playground. The water depth is between 2.6 to 3.2 feet. When the incident occurred, many adults and children were playing in it. The reason for the accident was that the wall of the swimming pool was broken. A witness said that there were two deep pools below the collapsed pool. The water depth was about 1.5 meters. Five feet below the deep pool was a dam, and further down was a river. The river was not deep, but about one meter, three point two feet. The witness also mentioned that the height difference from the collapsed swimming pool to the river below is about ten meters, thirty three feet. Even if the water is not deep, it is very dangerous for tourists to be washed down instantly. Warning comes a week before. Actually, a risk complaint about the construction safety hazard was filed a week before. And the official's assessment is in process so far. The playground in question just opened on July 8th, meaning just a week before the accident happened. Some people complained that the place had serious safety hazards. On July 11th, a netizen wrote a message to the secretary of the Pengxi County Party Committee. In the message, the netizen complained that the place had serious safety hazards. The complaint involves hidden dangers of traffic safety and medical safety, among others. The complaint also states that the playground is a temporary construction without any business-related license, and there is no relevant person in charge. In the relevant part of the swimming pool, the complaint reads that there is a deep water area in the swimming pool site. The water depth exceeds 1.5 meters (5 feet), and children are playing in the deep water area. The swimming area is isolated, and parents are not allowed to enter and escort their children. And the pool lifeguard has not undergone professional drowning rescue training. The person was employed without a license. The complaint also pointed out that the lighting facilities at night are poor. The lights are dim. It is impossible to clearly tell if a child is drowning or not in this situation, and it is impossible to rescue in time. The swimming pool water has not been replaced and disinfected in time, 
and the water quality is poor with smells. At that time, the netizen suggested that the relevant departments should order the business to suspend operation. However, as of the time of publication, the complaint showed that it was in process. The staff of Pengnan Township, Pengxi County, told the Southern Metropolis Daily that the incident was awaiting official notification. According to the World Journal, a Chinese man named Wu Shi Hui took a bank loan a few years ago to build a condominium in Barrage, Brooklyn, New York. He then sold it to 20 Chinese buyers. After getting $4 million from the buyers, he fled to China. The legal documents show Wu obtained a $6 million loan from a bank 10 years ago. He then purchased a vacant lot at 345 Ovington Avenue in Barrage, Brooklyn, where he built a five-story condominium with 25 units. He allegedly sold the units to 20 Chinese families from 2012 to 2015. He lied to the buyers, claiming that the New York state government had approved the building for sale. Most of the buyers were introduced by friends and knew that Wu Shihui had developed this real estate project. Only one or two households learned about the project through real estate agents. At the time, Wu promised to give discounts if buyers recommended others to buy it. Many Chinese were deceived because they felt that the offered price was reasonable. After paying the money, buyers moved into the building. It seems that the contract Wu provided to the buyers was poorly handwritten and with cash payment requirements. As these victims neither spoke English nor were familiar with legal procedures, they didn't think much about it then. However, Wu fled back to China with the buyer's money and stopped paying loans to the bank. The bank filed a lawsuit against Wu. In February, the New York State Superior Court announced that the bank won the case. The judge allowed the bank to open the foreclosure process, that is, to forcibly confiscate the apartment for auction. Under the risk of losing homes, 20 victims also filed a lawsuit against Wu and hired lawyer Edward Kusia on their behalf. Although the court has accepted their lawsuits, the auction will run on July 28th. This way, residents will lose their homes and life savings. They feel desperate and helpless. Homeowners are about to hold a press conference in the Koyan restaurant at 6521 8th Avenue to find solutions for their house ownerships. They call for public support. Taiwan is on the front lines of this epic contest. The greatest challenge facing the democracies of the West today is not in Russia. It is here in Asia, where China continues to challenge the rule-based international order that threatens freedom-loving peoples throughout the region. Taiwan my personal view that the one China policy has outlived its usefulness, that it is time to move away from strategic ambiguity. It is important that the American people and our leaders in Washington fully see that the Taiwan people are fully committed to standing up to communist China and defending themselves as we, the democracies of the world, stand behind Taiwan. 总统蔡英文感谢大西洋理事会和艾斯培支持台湾台湾期待深化和美国的经济伙伴关系也在强化欧洲链接计划呼应欧盟的全球门户计划他说近期美国欧洲台湾都发生许多变化除了面对疫情
where the mummified body of the Buddhist monk had been worshipped by the villagers for more than 1,000 years. However, in the autumn of 1995, something unexpected happened. 当时是这边是一个土墙,就往这边挖一个洞,当公司从这个地方被倒出去的。now placed in the temple is a replica of the original Buddha statue. To everyone's surprise, 20 years later, the real Buddha statue resurfaced, but it's far away in Hungary. In 2020, the Semi Intermediate People's Court of Fujian Province pronounced the villagers of Yangchun and Dongpu have the proprietary right to the Buddha statue and the right to recover the precious cultural relic. The relic holder, Oscar van Overeem, a Dutch art collector, appealed to a higher court after the verdict. After further investigation and trial, the Higher People's Court of Fujian Province on Tuesday upheld the ruling, ordering the Dutch collector to return the statue to its owners within 30 days. Zangong主持呢 也会把张工追索的这个事情，我们交代给我们的下一代。